everybody. Thank you for joining us today. I'm so pleased to be invited to speak. I am Janet McKee. I run an organization called Sauna View. I am the holistic health counselor on staff at Seclair working with Dr. Chaudhry. Sauna View is a word that sauna is Latin for health and wellness, and it's a view into health and wellness. And part of our organization is a nonprofit organization where we give people a view into health and wellness. I am here today to speak about two topics, but the first topic, of course, is about food right before lunch. Don't you love that? Well, we are here together, me, holistic health counselor, along with my dear friend, Dr. Stan Wexler, and I'm going to be bringing him up in just a few minutes to introduce uh, some of this that we're going to be talking about today, which is management of pain and cancer. Part of Sauna View is a wonderful 52-acre organic farm that we are developing right near Seven Springs. So I teach so much about which foods to eat, but now I'm teaching about paying attention to the sources of the foods you eat. And so we're creating this beautiful facility to teach people about organic gardening, sustainable living, natural healing. So please do visit us when you are available. So which foods are important for pain and cancer? There you go. There's the answer right there. My presentation is done. No, <laughs> I'm sure you're here to hear more. So this is what we're talking about. I am the local representative for the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine. This is an organization that was developed back in the 1980s by a group of medical doctors and nutrition experts. And they wanted to start looking at cancer. Why was cancer so high, the rates of cancer so high in this country and not in other countries? And what they found was nothing short of dramatic they found that food played a major role. And so they formed Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine and they trained practitioners like myself across the country with the scientific medical research on how foods fight cancer and diabetes. And they put together a Food for Life program. The mission is to advance cancer and diabetes prevention and survival through the education and research. So we've heard about this, we're all familiar with this. We've heard from Dr. O'Neill the standard American diet, this is what people are eating. And this is a huge concern. It is no wonder that we have so, such high rates of chronic illnesses in this country. All kinds, heart disease, obesity, diabetes, cancer. My own health challenge, which is an autoimmune disease, and this is what we're finding is happening in this country because of the standard American diet. So I have my own health challenge Back in my early 20s, I was diagnosed with an autoimmune disease called ulcerative colitis. And I was told I had to be on medication the rest of my life and there was nothing I could do to resolve my illness. So I continued on the path of being on the medications, but as I got older, my illness got progressively worse. So what did we do? We increased the dosage of medication, right? The medication's there to suppress the symptoms of the illness, but it doesn't resolve the cause of the illness. So I landed in the hospital, couldn't eat, hadn't eaten for about two months, had internal bleeding that wouldn't stop, and my liver was failing and I couldn't walk. And the doctor came to me, I, I was in the hospital on an IV of prednisone, trying to get this inflammation to stop, and this will make more sense as we go forward with these presentations today. And he said, well, Janet, the reason why your liver is failing, the reason why you can't walk is your liver's failing because you're allergic to the medications for ulcerative colitis, but we have an option for you. Either we can give you another medication that has a 15% chance of causing cancer, or we can start removing your organs. And I didn't know anything about health and healing. I was MBA type in the corporate world. And I said no, something inside me said no. I'm not gonna do either of those. And I got out of the hospital, just barely, and began on my journey of learning how to heal my body naturally. And I was so inspired by this and just so amazed by it that I decided to change careers. I went to Columbia University in New York City to study holistic health. But I went there cautiously because I thought I was able to heal my body, but maybe other people can't. So what happens at the, at Columbia, all of these great medical doctors came up and taught us that food and lifestyle are everything. They are everything for having a healthy mind and body. That's what we're gonna to learn today. So, who did we have? Dr. Dean Ornish, Neil Bernard, Andrew Weil, Deepak Chopra, all these great medical doctors came and told us Food and lifestyle are everything, so let's look at that. And this will make sense as we go through how we're tying this to cancer. We know that heart disease is an illness of poor food choices and a sedentary lifestyle and high stress. Do you know that? If you eat a double quarter pounder with cheese and bacon, are you aware that that might be hard on your arteries? 
Well, I hope you're aware of that because it's true. We know this, Dr. Dean Ornish, 20-year landmark research study that has proven you can reverse heart disease. You can actually dissolve the plaque in your arteries. And how is he doing that? He's getting people on a low-fat, plant-based diet, reducing stress, and increasing exercise, holistic health. And what's fascinating, since we're here talking about pain and cancer, is we're finding that you have certain arteries that, when clogged, cause chronic pain, right? The lumbar artery going to your lower back. Did you ever imagine that your lower back pain could be caused by poor food choices? These arteries are some of the first to be clogged. So heart disease, of course. Heart disease is an illness of poor food choices. You change your diet, and you can not only prevent heart disease, which would be ideal, but you can even reverse heart disease. Well, what about diabetes? We have great work from Dr. Neil Bernard and Gabriel Cousins, and even more recently, Dr. Joel Furman. They are proving you can reverse type 2 diabetes. But guess what? We know diabetes, type 2, is an illness of poor food choices and sedentary lifestyle. Are you aware of that? OK, so of course, if you change your diet, you can reverse type 2 diabetes. And let me tell you, I see this all the time. My own father, two years ago, gentleman born and raised in Italy, lives in this country now, 75 years old. He used, to, he used to laugh at me about eating healthy. He's like, Janet, I can eat anything. I'm fine. You're so silly to worry about eating healthy. Well, last year, or well, two years ago, he had diagnosed with diabetes. He came to me, decided to listen to me, and followed my advice. But it was interesting, he was first diagnosed, but a week later, he was due to go back to the doctor to get his insulin. And he went back to the doctor and he said, I met this woman, he didn't say it was his daughter, and she said that diabetes could be reversed. And the doctor laughed at him and said, oh, Joe, just follow the advice of my registered dietitian, you'll be fine. We'll keep you on your insulin. Well, he decided to follow my advice within 60 days. He kept weaning himself off his insulin and completely resolved his diabetes, went back to his doctor, and the doctor said, Joe, I can't believe this. What did you do? Your diabetes is gone. I'm taking it off your chart. My father from the old country never used a cell phone before. That day he found a cell phone, called me on the phone, and said, Janet, you're not going to believe what my doctor said. OK, diabetes can be reversed. How are we doing it? We're putting people on a low-fat plant-based diet, reducing stress and increasing exercise. Does that sound familiar? It's the same way that we're reversing heart disease. What about cancer? We have the work now, right now. Dr. Dean Ornish is finishing a fabulous study where he is proving he can reverse prostate cancer in men. How is he doing it? Putting people on a low-fat plant-based diet, reducing stress, and increasing exercise. Do you get the point? We're heading somewhere here. It's the same solution for everything. And I'm going to explain why, once you understand why. But Dr. Michael Greger has explained Go to the World Health Organization, American Dietetic Association, American Heart Association, American Institute of Cancer Research, and nobody states eat more meat or chicken to fight disease. They all state. And let me tell you, this is true. There are thousands of studies of food that fight cancer. It's always a plant food. You've heard it. Blueberries, walnuts, grapefruits, asparagus, pomegranates. It's always a plant food. So, National Institute. Cancer Institute has stated publicly that 50% of cancers are food related, which is interesting. The same foods that prevent cancer are the same foods that help improve your chances of survival if you've been diagnosed. That's the polite way of saying reverse cancer or fight cancer. Okay, so what's fascinating, same foods that prevent it help improve your chances. This is not new news. The Journal of National Cancer Institute back in 1981 has stated the diet plays a major role in one third or two thirds of human cancers, and there's overwhelming evidence, overwhelming evidence, that high fruit and vegetable consumption reduces cancer risk. Why? We understand. You've heard that growing up. Did somebody ever tell you eat your fruits and vegetables? <laughs> well, now I'm going to tell you why. Why? Because the plant foods have everything your body needs to be healthy. They are the source of fiber. As a matter of fact, plant foods are the only source of fiber. Did you know that? Fiber is another word for plant roughage. So we think of fiber as improving our digestive health and making sure we eliminate efficiently, which is important for good health. But fiber supports your liver's detoxification mechanism. Very important for helping your body detoxify too much fat, cholesterol, hormones, and toxins that can contribute to poor health. Plants also are rich with nutrients. They are the only real source of antioxidants. 
Antioxidants. Your body has oxygen molecules. They can be delicate, and they can become unstable, and that's called a free radical. When you eat antioxidants, which means antioxidant free radical, it helps eliminate these and fight these. So antioxidants come from plant foods. What about phytonutrients? You know what phyto stands for? Stands for phyto, P-H-Y-T-O means plant. Plant nutrient. These are key for fighting cancer and other illnesses. And what's also important is when you are eating more plant foods, you naturally are eating less fat. All the saturated fat that's found in animal-based foods, you're getting a lower fat diet naturally when you're eating more plant foods. And yes, nuts and avocados have fat, but guess what? They're high in fiber and they're high in antioxidants, they're high in phytonutrients, they have everything else that your body needs and the fats are healthy fats. So fat is not only important for heart disease, you may imagine that, I know that. Fat is important for diabetes. Diabetes, right, is insulin trying to open, insulin's the key to unlock the door to allow glucose into the cell. When insulin is trying and trying and trying to unlock the door, but the key lock is all gummed up, it can't work anymore, and it fails, and you get insulin resistance. Then you get high blood sugar. Everybody thinks blood sugar is the issue. That's the end result. The issue of diabetes is the fat and toxins of the cell that's stopping insulin from doing its job. So when you get all the fat and junk out of the diet and allow the cells to clean out, insulin works again. So fat is also important for diabetes. And guess what? Fat is an issue for cancer. We're seeing that men and women that eat a high fat diet, their hormones go through the roof, that affects their hormone sensitive organs, and so forth. So fat, you must trim the fat from your diet, just like this woman is trying to do. Fat is important. So, this is what we talk about in the Food for Life program with Physicians Committee, the new four food groups, okay? And trust me, you don't have to only eat plant foods. If you have a health challenge, a serious health, we recommend that you try it for a while until your body can heal. But we want you to be plant-based. The new four food groups, fruits, vegetables, whole grains, and legumes. Everything else should be a condiment, if at all. Just a little bit of other things. Do you know the blue zones? Have you ever heard about the blue zones around the world, the countries that live the longest and healthiest? Do you know that every blue zone is a plant-based diet? They're not a plant-only diet, all of them, but the most of their plate is filled with plant foods. What do you see? Okay, now Japan, you see a lot of rice and vegetables. Sardinia, Italy, Crete, Greece, a lot of whole grains and pasta and beans and vegetables and fresh fruit and a little bit of meat to flavor things and a little bit of cheese to flavor things. But it's plant-based. This is what's key. This way of eating not only helps fight heart disease, diabetes, and cancers, also a whole range of other diseases, like I told you, even my autoimmune disease, became resolved at the age of 49. I'm on no medication, no illness whatsoever, and 15, 20 years ago, I was told by my medical doctor that was impossible. It is possible. So, there's no question that largely plant-based diets are as healthy as you can get them, but it's a social and overwhelming and producer for such a long period of time that it is no longer debatable. Quote from Mary Nestle, Chairman of the Nutrition Department at New York University and Director of Nutrition Policy at the U.S. Department of Health. American Dietetic Association. So people say, well, wait a minute, I can't get everything I need from plants. I can't get enough protein. I can't get calcium, so forth and so on. That's false. You get everything you need from a plant-based diet. I'm here to teach you how to do it if you're interested. So, American Dietetic Association has even stated, and that's a conservative organization, appropriately planned vegetarian vegan diets are helpful, nutritionally adequate, and provide health benefits and treatment of certain diseases. So, why cancer? What exactly is happening with cancer? Let me give you some examples. We've got antioxidants, beta carotene, for example. It comes with carrots, yams, cantaloupe, squash. What is that? When you eat something with beta carotene, it actually surrounds every cell membrane of your body and protects you from free radical damage. Okay, isn't that amazing? Like, now the next time you eat a carrot, you'll think to yourself, wait a minute, I understand what's going on in my body. I understand why. This is so amazing. Okay, tomatoes from lycopene, vitamin C from red pepper. Vitamin C controls the watery areas. Vitamin E, red grapes, some resveratrol. Phytonutrients from garlic and onions. Phytonutrients from um, cruciferous vegetables like broccoli, cauliflower. Additional research on mushrooms. Okay, so I've seen people reverse 
breast cancer, prostate cancer, colon cancer. We've had clients with lung cancer. One woman came to me four years ago with terminal lung cancer. She had chemotherapy surgery the whole nine yards. She was told she only a few months left to live. She, it's now four or five years later. She's vibrantly healthy. Her tumors are gone. What did we do? We put her on a plant-based diet, high raw, which means fresh, uncooked fruits and vegetables. Doesn't that sound weird? Raw, food diet. Has anyone here ever eaten that salad? <laughs> eaten raw. <laughs> And we did juicing, fresh juicing, to help heal the body. So what happened? Dr. Betsy O'Neill invited me to speak at a conference a few years ago about the frontiers of integrated medicine and the healing power of food. I was very nervous. They wanted me to get up and talk about the vegetarian diet, the vegan diet, and raw foods. And I'm like, what? You want me to get up in front of the public and talk about eating your fruits and vegetables? I'm going to get food off the stage. I was so nervous. I got up there. I gave my presentation. Guess what happened at the end of my pre presentation? was a pivotal point in my entire career. This gentleman came up and approached me. He said, Ms. McKee, my name is Stan. I'm a retired physician. I love your presentation. I had stage four colon cancer, plus I have my liver and my lungs. Went to chemotherapy surgery, the whole nine yards had failed. My wife dragged me off to an institute that taught me exactly what you just said. Vegan diet, high raw, fresh juicing, and he no longer has cancer. Welcome, Dr. Stan Hutchard. This is great. Thank you for having me here. Uh, I'm not a public speaker, I'm a public screecher. Uh, Janet just basically gave my talk. Actually, uh, I did practice medicine for 27 years. I practice medicine much as you saw on the slide that Betsy presented. That was our practice. There was no other way of thinking, no other way of being. 1999, diagnosis of stage 4 of the colon. Uh, with a hepatic net, a liver net. And uh, what's very interesting is that this is a spiritual journey. This isn't all about the diet. I want you to understand that. Uh, my gastroenterologist came to me right after all the tests were done. I was rapidly, uh, uh, I rapidly went through all the tests in the hospital one day because I was president of the medical staff at that time. Uh, and. One thing out my body said to me that I'll never forget. I knew what the prognosis would be from having read the books, from having spoken to patients, and also having given them the bad news. Al put his hand on mine and said, I have one other patient, now listen to this, one other patient just like you and he's lived for five years. And I grabbed on that point as a focal point and never looked back. You know, doctor's words are extremely important. And it's been shown that when doctors tell patients very specifically, this is what the textbooks say, you have X number of months to live, get your affairs in order, that's all I can do or all you should do. That basically is like giving them a death sentence. Like knowing you're going to the electric chair in six months and thinking about it every day of your life. And that's what we as physicians have to learn um, to do. We need to change the way we present bad news to patients and give them some hope. That's a whole other talk. Um, so what was the next thing? Well, my wife, who had a whole library full of all sorts of holistic and alternative medicine books that I never looked at for 27 years, because that's not part of our vocabulary. That's not what we do. That's not how we define ourselves. I said, Jenny, that's a lot of nonsense. Well, finally, when I was in that particular position, I realized everything I had told patients wasn't necessarily going to work. 5-FU is exactly what it says. It doesn't, it doesn't really work, in my opinion. And she dragged me off to see a native Indian healer by the name of Louis Melmadrona. And I spoke, spent a week with Louis in what he called his intensiva. And I walked into his office, and immediately I felt very comfortable, because his office looked the same as mine. Papers all over the place.
Louis. And he said, what can I do for you? I said, Louis, I am Dr. So-and-so. This is what I have, blah, 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 blah. How can you help me? And I'm paying the big bucks for UPMC to have this service performed. And Louis looked at me and said, I don't know how you're going to get better. You're going to have to find the way. And I'm thinking, well, that's a heck of a thing. I'm going for a consult. And somebody's telling me I have to find out how I'm going to get better. This is absurd. So a number of other things happened. And uh, Lewis said, what are you going to be doing in five years? Now, nobody who comes into an office with a 5-FU pump is ever asked by a doctor, what are you going to be doing in five years? And I thought that was unusual. And I started to think about it. And through journaling and working with Lewis, I said, I'm going to be working with cancer patients. I have absolutely no idea where they came from because I used to be able to, I used to run away from cancer patients in my practice. If they were in the hospital, I spent as little time as possible with them. Wrote my notes, <clears throat> gone. Two years later, the tumor re tumors recurred in my lungs. I went to see the big GI oncologist at UPMC and a pulmonary uh, thoracic surgeon. And uh, uh, I was feeling well at that time, but I had done a lot of other things with vitamins, etc. I said, what are the side effects of these new drugs that you're going to show me? And he told me what the side effects are. I said, well, what's, what's the long-term survival? Because you know we're unfocused, long-term, not short-term. And he looked at me and said, well, you'll have an increase two months median survival. And I figured, well, if I had five tumors, I'd most likely have micromeds elsewhere in my body. So I declined surgery as the other option at that time. We didn't know what we were going to do. One day my wife came to me and said, I remember something my wife told me. I remember something my mother told me many years ago. And it says, Ann Wigmore program. It's the program that Janet just described. Raw food, living food, I've got five minutes. That's stress. Uh, you know, we talk about hurry sickness, you're causing it. So, she said, I have plane tickets. We're getting on a plane on, thir on Thursday. I said, I can't get on a plane on Thursday. I'm on call this weekend. She said, call your partners. They'll cover for you. Um, I called my partners. I never walked into that office again. Uh, went to Puerto Rico, went through this program. Let me tell you what happened. You, you could read about the living food or the raw food diet. I did the whole thing. We had wheatgrass here, wheatgrass there, wheatgrass everywhere. <laughs> and, uh, uh, you know, it was a lot of fun. And you, know, you forget about your troubles. I lost 15 pounds. I came back. My CA started to go down. I had a follow-up CT scan. One of the tumors became a little smaller. And now the real strange part of the story, who knows Carolyn Mace? All right, Carolyn Mace doesn't give any interviews anymore. We were at a conference in Philadelphia, and Carolyn uh, stated, I have 2,000 people on my waiting list. I don't give interviews. I don't do my scans. I speak. I write books. My wife managed to get in the ear of her uh, manager. She told a little bit about my story. So during one of the breaks, the 650 people in the audience, Carolyn Mace came down and said, where's Stan Rutcher? I said, here. I went in, out to the lobby, and she said, what can I do for you? I said, Carolyn, I'm so-and-so, I'm Dr. Yuppity Yupp. I have four tumors here and one tumor here. Can you tell me how I'm doing if I have tumors elsewhere? Now remember, she knows I'm a physician. I'm telling her when I had my scan. I'm telling her what it showed. I gave her the sizes. And she did a quick body scan. And she looked at me and she said, are you sure you have cancer? I said, I know I have cancer. She said, it has no energy. You're going to be fine. She walked away. So 
all of you guys who were involved in energy healing and things like that. Uh, there is some power, there is some intuitive abilities you have that I quite frankly don't understand. But that was really one of the most shocking things I ever heard in my life. I then came back, people knew about my story, and I became medical director of the Dean Ornish program at our hospital for a while. And I did see two people uh, who had been on the heart transplant list who were able to basically get off all of their medications. And to follow with that vision, you know, when Jen and I met, we finally collaborated. And about a year and a half ago, we uh, put on a little bit of a retreat for 12 cancer patients who had some significant uh, disease. And I want to just get back to Lewis for a second. I think the uh, major point that we took from that is that we formed a community without really understanding what was going on. We formed a community, uh, community and the, the way people behaved from day one to day five was absolutely remarkable. We were honored to have Dr. Chopper there as our lead speaker and to our surprise and delight and some of our apprehension, he canceled his patients for several days and came back with people from his office. So we didn't realize what we were doing, but somebody up there was doing a lot of work for us. And I want to thank you for your attention. And uh, I still have a few little problems. I've lost my hair, lost my memory, <laughs> and the women don't find me attractive anymore. <laughs> so thank you very much. Thank you.